Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another restful episode of True Scary Stories to help you fall asleep. I first want to say I apologize for the long absence. Once we got back from our trip, um, I had some computer issues. I was able to get one video out, but um, I was unable to get other ones out due to the computer issues. But I do believe that those are all worked out now and we should be able to continue releasing videos as normal. So again, I do apologize for that and I hope that we're past all of that now and we should be able to continue on as normal. But I do appreciate all of you who has stuck with me throughout my hiatus and I am back now. So without further ado, lay back, relax, and enjoy these true scary stories. This is not my story, but was told to me by the survivor. Many years ago, when Staten Island was essentially a woodland, my friend, Sandy, met a man who seemed a little off. In spite of her mixed feelings, she decided to meet him in a coffee shop for a first date, just to see how it went. He pulled up for their date at a Manhattan cafe, dressed for the beach and said, Come on, let's go to the beach in Staten Island for a swim. She allowed herself to be coaxed out of her safe space into the car. They drove to Staten Island, stopped in a place to get some food, and again something said run, but she got back in the car. The man took her, not to the beach, but to a deserted quarry in Staten Island. This was when the whole island was woods, 60 years ago. When he got out of the car, his gaze transfixed. He went catatonic, produced a knife, and demanded that my friend perform fellatio on him at knife point. In the middle of this, he underwent another transformation, became confused and disoriented, dropped the knife and seemed to be a different person. My friend cursed him out and demanded he drive her home. A distance from her real home, she demanded he let her out of the car. She took off home via the subway and did not let him know where she lived. For weeks after, he called the girl's mother at the phone number she had provided, lamenting that he had let her go. My friend wondered if she had escaped from Richard Speck. She conveyed this information to me when I was in college myself in the late 70s, and I never forgot it. It was the first weekend in May of 1997 when this happened. At the time, I was a sophomore at our local private two-year college. Instead of living in the dorms, I lived at home as our house was right next to campus. To the point, I was closer to a couple of my classes than the students who lived in the dorms. Just to the south of our place was an overflow parking lot, which served both the church and the school. The school was about to embark on a remodel project where it had enough construction to warrant parking a tractor trailer in the overflow parking lot, basically perpendicular to our house. Two of my best friends were headed home in the next morning, one for Iowa and the other for Virginia. So we decided to spend the evening as best we could by watching movies. Remember youngins, this was before streaming services were ever a thing. The college was a hotbed of activity, as people were packing up to head home with the graduating sophomores getting ready for the ceremony in two days. As we were lounging in my living room, a couple of the girls we knew, one of which I was interested in, suddenly rang the doorbell, asking to come in to wash her hands, as they had been on a walk and their hands smelled funny. The girl I was digging, named KT, stuck her hands in my face, to which I recognized the distinct smell of having shaving cream, so I knew that something nefarious was afoot. We watched them leave via the dining room windows before I told the boys they were up to something, so we left from the back door. Those two girls had tried to trash my friend's room with shaving cream and toothpaste. Oh, it was game on. We ran into one of the boys' mod mates, an obnoxious guy who had no concept of boundaries. 
I had made a point of never letting the guy, let's call him JB, know where I lived as he was the type to just show up unannounced and not pick up on social cues when it was time to leave. The girls were hiding from our retribution, and even JB pledged his loyalty to help us. I told him to keep an eye out. We'd be back. So we left him hanging in the common area under the girls' dorms. We slid back to my house, to which I told the boys to just be patient. The girls would be back. We set up watching to the south from the darkened dining room, soon rewarded by seeing KT sneaking back towards the house. I told the boys the plan was to ambush her, so we crept out of the back door. KT had disappeared behind the tractor trailer as she was obscured from view, but to our dismay, there was a black clad figure laying on the ground, just around the corner from the trailer where KT was hiding. My boys were next to me as I was cussing in whispers because I was 30 yards away from whom I thought was JB. He was laying with his head away from us, so he couldn't see us without turning his body as he stayed perfectly still. He might have been 10 feet from the corner of the trailer where KT was. After a brief discussion, I said it couldn't be helped, so we'd continue with our plan to ambush scare KT. The three of us quietly padded around the backside of this trailer to find KT on her stomach, intently watching the house, trying to see movement. She was actually way closer to where JB was laying, completely oblivious to the fact that he was actually within five feet of her prone position. She never heard me as I crept up behind her, curled my hands into claws before grabbing her as I snarled. Fetal position instantly for her, which prompted howling laughter from my two friends and myself. She was petrified as we chortled. I caught my breath long enough to wonder where JB was, as I thought he would have joined us by now. Looking around the corner, there was no one on the ground, but you could tell someone had been laying where we saw him, even in the darkness. One of the boys, TC, said the black-clad figure jumped up and ran to the west. Odd, I thought, but JB was also a strange cat. After KT apologized for her earlier hijinks, and I had detailed what happened, our merry band made it back to campus to keep our eyes on her. We ran into JB, to which I said, Dude, you didn't have to run off. You could have stayed. JB replied, Um, I don't even know where you live. The realization hit us like a ton of bricks. It wasn't JB laying on the ground, mere feet from KT. KT went white as a sheet, and all of us were suddenly creeped out by the random guy laying on the ground. It turns out during the summer, all around the college, there were cases of houses being walked through, with very little being taken, as if someone was casing houses, but no one was ever caught. This story happened a few years ago in the Palm Bay estate area of Kent, England. Me and two friends live around there, and we were bored, so we decided to walk around and take pictures of the area, as we thought it looked creepy. We walked up a road in the belly of the suburbs and took pictures of the houses, trapped in between others. To us, it seemed like there was no way into them. We saw a small concrete path and decided to walk up it. We found a big square of houses that all looked the same. We thought it would be funny to knock on people's doors and ask if we could play with your Leighton. When people answered the doors, they usually just told us we had the wrong house, and we should try someplace else. However, one time we did it, somebody answered the door, then instantly shut it without looking at us. My friend knocked again, and they did it again. We decided to leave the square and go to a nearby park. Walking out the square, a couple left the house from the side door with two dogs, They walked behind us to the park also. When we got there, we sat down to watch a cricket match being played, and the couple just stood there looking at us for about three minutes. We decided to leave after the last batsman got out and walked back to a friend's house. We went through the suburbs again, and the couple followed us. When we got to the path to get into the square, they stood on the edge of the path, and the woman pulled out her phone to call someone. Back then, we thought she was calling the police or something like that, so we ran away. I'm not sure what we did to trigger them, especially as they were the first house we knocked on in the square.
A few years ago, I was hiking the southern portion of the Pacific Crest Trail in Washington State. It was last June, so warm enough that water sources were valuable. I made camp towards the end of the day in a mildly used site. It was a few feet off the trail, but not deep into the woods. A babbling brook was about 50 feet away. As I was heating water on my tiny stove for dinner, an older, probably 60-ish year old man walked down the trail. He saw me and hollered to ask if I had any water. I noticed that he was wearing regular clothes, jeans, sneakers, and a casual white button-down shirt. No pack. All odd. I was far enough down the trail, maybe 10 miles from any road, that a day hiker would have been extremely rare at that point. I welcomed him into my camp and gave him water from a jug. He drank it, thanked me, then walked on. I thought it was odd and it stuck in my mind. The following week, I came off the trail to a nearby town and learned of a massive manhunt for a guy in his 60s wearing jeans, sneakers, and a casual white button-down shirt. He had abandoned his car near the PCT and was on the run from the feds for money laundering and other white-collar crimes. I never did learn if they found him. I often wonder how far he got with no gear, no food, and no water. A small part of me hopes that he got away. I'm an 18-year-old female, and I was young when it happened, probably 9 or 10, so some of the details are a bit fuzzy. At the time, I definitely didn't find it to be a big deal. Only recently I've been thinking about it and realizing how creepy the whole thing was. My mom believes it's one of the scariest things to ever happen to her, and that she genuinely feared for our safety at the time. We were driving late one night, and it was just me, my mom, and my dad. Eventually, we got a bit turned around, and I think this was still a time when iPhones were relatively newer to my family, and not the best quality. So, my dad pulled into a bar and asked for directions. It's completely dark out, and he gets out of the car with it still running to go inside. A couple of guys are standing on the porch of the establishment, and they're eyeing me and my mom alone in the car. After a couple minutes, one of them comes out and seems to be coming towards our car, but goes to a truck next to us. He fiddles around in it for a few seconds. Then he gets out and makes it seem like he'll go back to the porch with his buddies. Instead, he turns at the last second, tugs at our door handle, and sets in our driver's seat. Clearly, he is intoxicated. He's older, maybe 50s or 60s. The car is still running, mind you and nothing is stopping him from doing something reckless like changing the gears. He starts talking to my mom, and it's clear she's uncomfortable. He says something like, Oh, I just want to go on a ride. And my mom is nervously playing along, probably in an attempt to placate him enough so he doesn't try anything. My mom mentions a couple times that my dad is just getting directions inside, and that he'll be back any second. Eventually, the man does get out, and my mom locks the doors. His buddies are all laughing and continue staring at us. When my dad comes back out, the drunk guy stops my dad and says he was joking around with us. I know when my dad got back in the car, my mom was furious because she hadn't wanted to stop at the bar in the first place. He definitely didn't see it the way she did. He took it as a harmless drunk guy and that it was fine because nothing happened. Looking back, the situation had so much potential to go wrong me and my mom didn't have anything to defend ourselves, and there was nothing stopping him from driving off in the car with us. It's amazing the things we brush off at a young age, and only later we realize how dangerous it could have been. So back in 2015, I was visiting a friend who lived in Burbank, California. You know, those silly, creepy folklore tales where you go to a rural place where a tragedy had happened, then you do some obscure thing like flash your lights three times, and then something super creepy happens. Yeah, well, we were in our early 20s and thought that doing something like that would be super fun and cool. 
My memory isn't the best, so I'll probably get some of the details wrong. But the story goes that there was this children's psychiatric hospital on top of this massive hill where a school bus had crashed while transporting multiple of children, causing them all to die. The psychiatric hospital was now serving as a cemetery. You were to go to the cemetery, find the driveway leading to the house at the back of the grounds, and put your car in neutral. Then your car would be pushed up this hill, and you would have small fingerprints all over your bumper from said ghosts of children's past. We're driving to the cemetery, and there's this tiny little village, literally only one stoplight, and a long winding road up to the top of the hill where the cemetery was. We get to the top finally, and are driving around for a bit trying to find the point to put the car in neutral. Having a hard time finding it, next thing you know, we turn the corner and I kid you not, there were about 30 people in the white hoods with 20 foot long torches in a circle in the middle of the cemetery. Mind you, it's like 3 a.m. at this point. I'm freaking out. My friend who is driving seems mildly disturbed but just parks her car out of sight to look something up. Next thing we know, there's a massive white pickup truck that comes speeding up behind us, flashing their lights and honking their horn. They're approaching so quick I think they're about to rear-end us and hurt us. My friend puts her car in gear and we're trying to outrun this truck. We're chased out of the cemetery down the winding hill. The truck tailgating us so hard, I truly don't know how he didn't hit us. Once we pass the light to exit the small village at the bottom of the hill, the truck turns around and heads back up to the cemetery. Needless to say, I never did anything of the sort ever again. I just found this subreddit and wanted to share an interaction that I had. This was around two years ago. I'm a 20 year old female at the time and I had just dropped my friend off. So I decided to stop at the gas station down the street to get a slushie. It was the middle of the day around 1 PM and the gas station was pretty empty. So I parked in the middle of the pumps. While I'm inside browsing snacks, I notice a group of five or so guys walk in and they're all looking at me hard. So I write it off and assume they're just checking me out or whatever. But I felt weird, so I grabbed my stuff and checked out. As I walked out the door, I looked towards my car and realized that the group of guys had parked me in. One car in front of me, one behind, both parked super close to me to prevent me from pulling out. I saw that there was a guy waiting in the car behind me, watching me. I knew I had to get the hell out of there, so I speed walked to my car got in and instantly locked the door, turning my wheel and backed up as much as I could towards the pump, then sped out of there. While I was maneuvering my car out, I saw the guy watching me get out his phone and it looked like he was yelling, I think to his friends in the store. I made sure they weren't following and then I went the F home. I don't know what they wanted from me and I didn't want to find out. I ended up hearing a similar story from another girl in my city, but she had banged her car up when she tried to get away. This happened a while ago, but I saw this subreddit and thought it would be a good fit. It was a weekend, so I was alone in my house. I was playing video games when I got a notification from my doorbell camera. There was a man outside. His beard was ruffled, and to be honest, he looked like someone who was homeless. I asked him what he was doing there. He responded with, doesn't Nancy live here? I told him no, that he should leave. He didn't take kindly to that and kept insisting that he needed to meet Nancy. I told him again that there was no Nancy and that he had the wrong house. I was freaked out because none of my neighbors are named Nancy. My name isn't Nancy. No one I know was named Nancy. I watched him as he stood there, looking at the camera. He was mumbling something about Nancy over and over. He then sat down on my porch steps for some time waiting. I told him to leave or action would be taken. He just sat there. After about 10 minutes, he walked away. The man didn't have a car or anything. He walked. 
I thought it was very eerie and creepy. The fact that he was so stubborn about it. I waited some time before even heading downstairs. I was scared he would be at my door again. After an hour or two, I did though. I have not seen that man since, and I hope that I never will. This is a bit long. Sorry. I've only ever told one person this, and after reading the stories on this subreddit, I didn't think mine was creepy enough. But I think that's just me convincing myself it's no big deal to minimize the memory of it and not think about what could have happened to me. During the height of COVID, I, a female in my 20s, decided to get some fresh air after work and go for a walk at a nearby trail that parallels a side road and a highway. The parking lot for this section of the trail is very small, with only three parking spots in the lot. When I pulled in, there was a black suburban already there in the middle spot, so I parked to the right of it and stayed in my car texting, browsing Reddit, essentially procrastinating my walk. After a few minutes, a man in his mid-30s gets out of the black suburban and opens the hood of his car, and makes multiple trips back and forth from the hood to his trunk, seemingly looking for something. Each time, he passes between our cars and I can feel him looking inside at me as he passes my window. I become uneasy with the man, so resolve to not get out until he's gone. About 15 minutes pass of him continuing to look into the hood of his car, walking to his trunk, and passing between our cars while trying to catch my attention. I avoid eye contact throughout. Now, I was going through something in my life at the time that, in this moment, put me in the mindset of, I'm not going to let my discomfort of this man get in the way of me living my life, while simultaneously convincing myself that I'm probably just overthinking, overanalyzing, and assuming the worst when this guy is probably just a normal guy. After my internal debate is over, I resolve to get out of my car and go for a walk. Immediately after I get out, I ask him if he's having trouble with his car. He says no. My logic in talking to him is to feel him out to decide whether it's safe to embark on a solo walk with this guy who would see exactly where I went. Mistake number one. His car had some sort of government tags, which made me more at ease, and I asked him about the tags, to which he gave me a long-winded explanation that I don't remember. He then said, can I have a hug? And I know this was so stupid of me, but I was so isolated feeling during COVID that I figured he felt the same, and that we somehow recognized that. I was so desperate for human contact, so I said sure. Very, very stupid of me, I know. That was mistake number two. It's October, so we're both wearing coats. Mine was long, and went down to my calves, but was unzipped. When we hugged, his hands slash arms went inside my jacket, around my waist, instead of hugging me outside my coat. Once his hands were in, he quickly proceeded to feel my body down from my waist. I immediately pulled away and said, that was weird. I'm going on my walk now. I was panicked but didn't want to do anything that would make him act with urgency and escalate the situation. He was upset when I pulled away from our hug and asked if I wanted to hang out later. And he suggested that we add each other on Snapchat. Again, I didn't want to upset him, so I let him request to add me. I know, so stupid. Mistake number three. After that, I immediately said, Okay, I'm going for my walk now. Bye. I should have gotten in my car and noped out of there. Mistake number four. I speed walked out of view and instantly wished I had gotten in my car, as I now had no idea where this guy could be. My skin starts to crawl, and I feel very much in danger out there in the woods. I sprinted through some dense bushes and crouched down, so I was out of view. My heart was racing. About 30 seconds later, he came running along the trail frantically trying to catch up to me. I stayed off the trail and ran through the woods to some thick bushes by the parking lot and stayed there a while to make sure the coast was clear back to my car. Not long after, the man returns to his car, gets in and turns on the engine, and drives down the side road that parallels the trail. He slowly drives back and forth on the side road, turning around and starting over probably three times seemingly looking for me in the points I'd have been along the trail if I'd have been steadily walking since the time I'd started my walk. 
After about five minutes of my heart beating out of my chest as I watch this creep search for me, he gives up and turns onto the highway and speeds off in the opposite direction from where he said he lived. The second he was out of sight, I sprinted to my car as fast as I could and couldn't believe what had just happened. I drove home in a silent state of shock and numbness and haven't let myself think about it too much ever since. Freaking terrifying. I can let myself acknowledge that now. I hope someone can learn from the mistakes I made during this encounter. Stay safe out there, everyone. My friends and I, all 24-year-old males, were chilling in the gas station at 3 a.m., I know, probably the worst area and time to be doing such things, but the gas station was lively and also has a connected Tim Hortons that's 24-7. Anyways, we're chilling outside drinking coffee when all of a sudden a car parks in front of our cars. As I was the only one facing our cars, I never really thought twice about what's happening since he could just be chilling as well. Plus, as judgmental as this might seem, the fella that parked in front of our car was driving a nice Maserati, so in my head, it was safe, oddly enough. Anyway, ten minutes go by and this African-American man comes out of the vehicle and starts walking towards us. No big deal. Maybe he wants to ask a question or needs help with something, right? No. This guy pulls out his iPhone recording us on flash, just standing there. This is when things got weird. I asked, you good? When he replied with the same question back. He began to point to his friend who was in a Chevy pickup who was parked about 100 meters away. My friend looks back and asks the same question that I did. You good? At that point, the man walked away, flicking us off from facing away, and drove off going 0 to 15 and 20 out of the gas station quickly with his friend. I would usually rub this off as some crackhead, but the man was well put together having a dark blue Maserati with red interior and was wearing a tuxedo. He wasn't no random crackhead. He as well didn't enter the gas station. He came, parked his vehicle in front of our vehicle, and from there is that. We made a police report and didn't drive home until we were at the police station, parked for 20 minutes, ensuring no one was following us home. We did drive Dodge and Jeeps, notorious for being stolen in our area and chopped. Our theory is this man is out for our vehicles, but I don't know, just a weird event. I'm a 24 year old male and I do some freelance journalism outside of my university classes. The city I'm in has a population of about 170,000 people. About two weeks ago, a crash occurred near downtown, and I decided to go scope it out and see how newsworthy it was. The crash was on a two-laned side street near the projects. You can see where this is going. I had a thought come across my head while driving there, thinking, something weird is going to happen when I get there. And behold, as I was parking my car in the parking lot close to the crash scene, a woman was standing there in the middle of the lot gesturing me to park. I was like, oh, okay. She comes up to me and asks me to roll down the window. I cracked it open enough to talk. We had a strange conversation that went like this. The woman. Hey, hola. How are you doing? Can you help me out with something here? I'm trying to get my clothes out of the trailer over there but I can't see because it's too dark. Can I borrow a flashlight? I've been putting this off all day. Me. Um, I don't know. I don't really carry one with me. I lied. Her. You don't have a flashlight or anything I could borrow? Or maybe something to get food to eat? Maybe I could borrow your phone flashlight. I can get my clothes and come back and bring it back to you. All I got is this. She sews me a lighter and some light-up kid's toy. Me. I can't. I'm trying to cover this news story here. I'm a journalist. Her. I'm sorry, I didn't know. But maybe you could walk with me, so I won't go by myself. It's just right down there. 
She points behind a building that's a church and where the parking lot ends. I would, but I can't. I need to cover this. Her. I'm so sorry. I thought you were a random person. I'm sorry. Have a good night. It was nice meeting you. She walks away from my car and goes up to a guy I noticed mid-conversation next to a tent. The guy was pitching the tent. Then, they talked, and she glanced back at me while I was filming the crash scene. We made eye contact, but I broke it since I moved to get a different angle on the crash. They went into the tent, and I saw them using a light inside the tent. I thought she didn't have one. I finished filming and went not too far from where the police were parked to check my shots. Then I went back to my car and locked the doors. From how she was talking, I think she might have been under the influence of meth. She spoke fast and stuttered a little. After I finished editing my video, I left. This all happened at about 2 a.m., and I have video from my dash cam that picked up the conversation. I'll link it in the comments below. Let me know what you all think. And because this video is for sleep, I will not be playing the clip that OP posted about, but if you want to hear it, the link to that dash cam video is in the description down below. I'm a 25 year old female and I was around 22 at the time of this story. I used to work at Starbucks and there was a regular there. We'll call him John. John is old enough to be my dad, probably like 60s. I'd see him every day and we never really even made small talk. I ended up transferring to a store down the street and I noticed John started coming in. I thought maybe he just frequents stores in the area, no big deal, until he started bringing me gifts out of nowhere. He gave me his old Bluetooth Bose speaker, perfume, roses, a giant stuffed animal, etc. I hadn't seen John come in for a few days, so to my surprise, I'm on a break and someone comes and tells me he's asking for me. He hands me this straw hat with painted birds all over and says, I just got back from Mexico, saw this hat and it reminded me of so much of you and knew you had to have it. What the F? To top the cake? I had graduated college while I was working there. John comes in probably a week later with a bunch of pizzas and congratulates me for my victory. I never told him or really even made a big deal about it at work. This is a customer who I went from seeing every day for two years with minimal contact to absolute off the deep end love bombing coming out of literal thin air. This happened about five years ago when I was attending college in a small rural town. I'm a female and I was 21 at the time and I lived in a duplex with two roommates in a neighborhood. We had two houses on either side of us. We never really saw our neighbors much or talked to them until it was maybe three to 4 AM. I was just getting home from my boyfriend's house. I pull into the driveway and start walking up to my door when I hear help me. Please help me. At first, I was so startled that I bolted towards my door, but then I realized someone actually might need help. So I slowly walked back out front and noticed an older woman laying in my neighbor's yard. She calls out to me again. Please help me. I think I broke my hip. I fell off the porch. I walk over to her and ask if I can call an ambulance. She says, no. Can you please go inside and get Dr. Jones? I don't remember the exact name she said, but I do remember her saying, Doctor. I'm going to preface this by saying I know my next actions were not smart, but I wasn't thinking clearly at the time. So I walk inside the house and start calling out for Dr. Jones. While inside, I notice an open bedroom door with the light on and a mattress on the floor, which I assumed was the woman's room. I walked further back into the house calling out for Dr. Jones, and he eventually comes out of a back bedroom. He looks just as startled as I was. I tell him the situation and he follows me outside and helps her up. They thank me and I go back inside my house. The rest of the time I lived there, 
I never saw either of them again. Still, one of the weirdest things that's ever happened to me. This happened last year, and I honestly forgot until it came up in my Snapchat memories. My then roommate, a 20-year-old female, and I, another 20-year-old female, were studying for finals and pulled an all-nighter. Around 3.30, we decided to go to the gas station to get snacks. When we finally came back, we sat in the car for a few minutes before heading in. While we were walking up the stairs to our house, we heard the most gut-wrenching scream coming from behind us. It was nearly 4 a.m., and it sounded like someone was being murdered. My roommate, of course, freezes in fear with the keys, so I had to unlock the door and basically throw us both inside. Shortly after on the ring, we saw a person throw garbage bags in the dumpster across the street. We called the police because we were terrified and sat locked in my bedroom all night. We went down to the station in the morning because we had caught the scream on our ring doorbell. The police claim all they saw was an old woman walking around and it sounded very young. Safe to say, I didn't sleep well until I moved out of that place. It still gives me anxiety thinking about it. I hope it was just some weird person, and not something more sinister. I went to college in Florida. After graduating, the first thing on my mind was getting out of there. So I made plans to move across the country and start a new life. I was a 23 year old female at the time with all the options in the world. Everything was in order. I quit my job and a friend of mine agreed to take over my lease. I'd been living alone in a townhouse since my previous roommate graduated. So my friend moved into the other bedroom while I was preparing to move out. About a week later, 10 p.m. The two of us were watching TV when there was a knock at the door. My friend got up to answer. He came back with a bag full of food from a sandwich delivery place, assuming I'd ordered it. I hadn't. We thought maybe it had been delivered to the wrong address, but there was my name and address on the receipt. The phone number on the receipt, however, was unfamiliar. I called the number and someone answered, but they never spoke. I could only hear the ambient sounds of a room and breathing. I searched the phone number and it appeared to be through an app. I convinced myself that this was some kind of prank or misunderstanding. A few nights later, another knock at the door. My friend insisted on answering again, and I heard him telling a delivery person that this was a mistake. She doesn't live here anymore. No one ordered food to this address. The driver responded that they had taken the order themselves over the phone and spoken to a man who simply asked for the specials and ordered the first one. It was the same number on the receipt. I called again and again. I heard someone listening on the other end. The deliveries kept coming in every few nights. My move was delayed for unrelated reasons, and the longer I stayed, the more it began to really scare me. Why would someone do this? One time I called the number after another delivery, with my friend sitting next to me. The stranger picked up the phone as usual, but this time we heard a faint voice. She definitely still lives there. Then abrupt silence. I didn't recognize the person speaking, but I realized I shouldn't have been calling for my own number. I never called again. My friend tried, but the person on the other end never spoke aside from that one time. Eventually, most of the deliveries stopped, but someone continued harassing us for months in various ways. That phone number began calling at all hours of the day and night, sometimes 30 calls in a row. They usually called my phone, but called my friend sometimes as well. If we answered, they would immediately hang up and call again. I began getting random friend requests on every social media with messages such as, don't you remember meeting at the party last night? When I definitely hadn't left my house in a week. Most disturbingly, someone also started throwing eggs at the townhouse which suggested the stalker was local and knew where I lived. Maybe he was watching every time a delivery was dropped off. Maybe he was watching other times too. The only thing I ever learned was that he knew I hadn't moved. 
By this point, I was staying inside as much as possible, but you have to leave the house sometimes. I was terrified until I finally moved and blocked the number. My friend elected not to take over my lease, but I was always thankful he stayed with me those last couple of months. This was about eight years ago now, and I still don't have the faintest idea who it could have been. My former co-workers and a few college friends knew I was moving, but I couldn't think of anyone who would have a reason to keep track of whether or not I'd moved, and I didn't recognize their voice the one time I heard it. To this day, I refuse to answer unknown phone numbers or unexpected knocks at my door. Even contactless delivery gives me anxiety. I'm always half expecting them to show up again. The way my college was set up was basically two large hills. Classrooms, admin buildings, libraries, etc. were on one hill, and the dorms and cafeterias were on top of the other. In the valley between the two hills was where the gyms and sports centers were located. I was studying engineering and would often stay late in one of the study rooms until 1 or 2 a.m. One night I was alone walking back to my dorm around midnight, and I saw a guy standing at the top of the hill. No one else was around, and I was at the bottom of the hill. I had seen this guy on campus before, and he always gave me the creeps. His eyes looked really unhinged, and he often walked with jerky, almost frantic movements. Usually, I didn't think too much of it, and I assumed he was a student, and maybe he had some physical or psychological issues. A few of my classmates had pretty severe OCD, and would do quirky things while out and about, but none of them had the same look in their eyes as this guy. I wouldn't say it was an evil look, but his eyes always seemed untethered from reality. I always got the sense that he was seeing something a lot darker than the rest of us. On this night in particular, as soon as I saw him, I got a bad case of the creeps. He was coming down the hill, straight towards me, so I casually crossed to the other side of the path, and he followed so that he was still coming straight towards me. Again, I crossed the path and he did the same. I was getting nervous when suddenly, some guys come out of the soccer field at the bottom of the hill. That creepy guy noticed them, and when I moved out of his path, he didn't follow me. As I passed by him, I noticed he was staring at me, so I glared back to let him know not to mess with me. After that night, I started walking a different route behind the tennis courts to avoid him. It was kind of risky since late at night, no one was ever around there. But I also began calling my parents on the nightly walks back to my home, and that helped too. I saw that guy a few more times on campus during the day, but I never caught him looking at me again. Hopefully, my glare scared him off. I still have no idea if he was a student or just some weirdo hanging around looking to cause trouble. There was another guy on campus who posed as a student, even though he was kicked out. He once cornered one of my girlfriends in the library, trying to ask her out, and I think he was later arrested for refusing to leave campus. My family was chilling on the back porch of our house. The only other house that isn't a mile away is our next door neighbor. There's some wetland in the back that me and my sister play in and try to catch frogs. It was a summer evening and we just finished dinner and me and my sister who was like maybe four or five got off the porch because she said she heard a frog and she walked towards the tall grass and those pond weeds. She stopped walking at some point and runs back over to me and told me to look at the grass or look over here or something like that. And I just ignored her for a second because I was on my phone and my stepmom must have looked up because she made us go inside. I was so confused and when I asked what was happening, she said, someone's outside. My dad went to look outside, said no one was out there, but my stepmom was very, very sure that someone was out there by the grass or in the grass. I asked her about it a few years ago because it was a similar situation to us all on that back porch. 
and she said that she thinks it must have been a neighbor or something, but that my dad went and looked in the grass and said he didn't see anything. She said she saw a flashlight or a phone light coming from the grass or behind it and thought someone was walking it. My sister said she saw a flashlight in the grass moving around, but that she doesn't really remember seeing a person out there. I'm a young teen, like 11 to 14. I'm quite small, not trying to give away too many details, and I am a female, and I have bad anxiety, so I usually just keep my head down and stay away from situations. Well, recently, I've gotten a bit more chaotic and unwinded a bit, so I've been doing more risky stuff. Anyways, I took my friends to the mall for a girl's day, and we were there from morning to night. My father brought everyone back home, and one of my closer friends decided to stay the night. So we got back to my house and put all our new stuff inside the house and played video games for around an hour. Then I had the brilliant idea to go to the park. My friend agreed, so we got ready, and around this time it was 12.40, almost 1 a.m. My dad hesitantly led us, but if the park had a closing time, we had to walk the block instead. The park ended up being closed, so we walked the block. My friend was a bit scared, so she FaceTimed her girlfriend, and we listened to music on my AirPods and got some pictures. Now by 10 minutes into walking the block a few times, my friend got off the phone, and we planned on going back. I have to explain what the block looks like. My house is in the middle, the park is at the corner, and a few family friends live nearby. So we walked down one of the roads one last time, and there was a party going on at one of the houses next to the park. When we originally walked to the park, a boy at the party called me and my friend Emo. There was a truck next to the house facing the park, and three people in the truck. One man in his 30s was still getting in the truck. He looked at me for a few seconds. We waited for them to drive by while sitting on the park grounds at the entrance, but the truck didn't move. My friend stopped to change the playlist on my phone while I watched the truck. Then after the men in the truck watched us for a few minutes, they pulled into the park, inches away from me and my friend. I grabbed my friend's arm and pulled her, and we ran fast. The truck made a U-turn and started following us. So I ran into a lady's yard with my friend, hoping they would think it was our house. They stopped for a little bit and ended up driving past then. Me and my friend ran back to my house and told my dad, and didn't leave the house till the morning. Was this a sketchy encounter? I'm a 25 year old female and I was waiting for my at the time partner to finish work. He worked at a pub in our city as a chef. I would finish work earlier than him and have a drink and sometimes talk to locals who frequented the bar. One day I was outside on the balcony having a cigarette, and this guy came out and asked if he could join me. He seemed as normal as could be. Normal clothing, tidy hair, etc. You could walk past him in the street and not notice him. I said sure and handed him a lighter. All seemed normal. I felt safe as the balcony had a lot of people sitting around and drinking. Conversation was normal. He asked what I did. I asked what he did for a job. He was an orderly at the hospital. He randomly said something like, Don't you just wish the balcony would collapse and everyone fall and get crushed? I was shocked. I laughed a little because I thought maybe he had a very dark sense of humor. I tried to change the subject and started asking about his work. I remember looking around for my then partner. He wasn't finished yet, but I hoped he was. Asking about that was a mistake. He told me that he would often go to the rooms where people were in long-term comas and mess with them. To be honest, I thought he was just reusing a storyline from the Kill Bill movie. But the way he talked about it, and his eyes went weird. It was like he was excited to tell someone. His eyes were kind of wild when he spoke. He had the creepiest smile when he started talking about it, and staring off and rambling about wanting to kill one of them in their coma. I freaked out and jumped up saying I needed to go to the bathroom. 
I got one of the bouncers and had this man removed. As he was being taken out, I was standing at the door watching to make sure he left. He started screeching and pointing at me over the mountain of a man bouncer who was almost carrying him out. He was saying, You laughed. When the balcony collapsed, you laughed. You're in on this too. It's your fault too. I felt gross and dirty after this and tried to block it out of my memory. I should have said something to someone, but I never did. I didn't even tell my partner. I just wanted him and his crazy eyes to disappear. I've never spoken about this to anyone, apart from the girl who was with me when this happened. We had just turned 18, and it was summer, and there was this old abandoned bandstand where we would go to drink wine and talk about the future and watch the stars. We went often. I now realize that was a bit silly of us, but we were young. One night, it would have been around 2 a.m., a dude dressed in all black walked past the road above us and looked down at us. My friend was creeped out, and I was like, it's okay if you don't feel comfortable, we can leave. We started to gather our things, and this guy jumped up through the entrance on the other side. The road he was on to the entrance would have been like a five minute walk, and we couldn't have been getting ready to leave for longer than two minutes. He must have bolted around there. We ran away and he followed us, chasing us up the steps. It was honestly the scariest experience of our lives. My friend was falling over as she ran, because she was so scared, so I put her in front of me so I could keep picking her up. She said she had looked behind us, and he was so close. She said if he had reached his hand out, he would have been able to grab my hood and pull me back. We ran for around 10 minutes, and I'm not exactly sure when he stopped following us, but it was so scary. We ran onto the grounds of our old high school with the idea of, if he does do anything, we will be on CCTV. We never drank there again after that and never found out who he was. But I have to believe that his intentions were not good. Me. 16 and my sister 15 went to a nearby goodwill to find some athletic wear for her it wasn't that long after we entered that my dad approached me and gave me his clothes to hold as he wanted to smoke a cigarette outside i had always stuck to the buddy system when alone but i figured as my dad could see me and i was within earshot of my sister i was able to browse the clothes there wasn't very much at our goodwill it was after i turned down an aisle where the books and cds were that I noticed a man in a bright blue shirt was behind me. I had essentially thought nothing of it and browsed through the records, but I started to get this weird and itchy feeling after I noticed that he kept on inching closer. At the time, I already found a record and was debating if I should quickly turn and walk off, but I was admittedly stupid and didn't get away as fast as I wanted to. He seemed really icky and creepy when he was pretending to browse the lack of books. I wasn't there for long before my dad had found me and told me that it was time to go. I was incredibly grateful for his timing as I was feeling really tense and anxious. My dad even told the man to back up and watch how close he was, but the man didn't even react. He just stayed hunched over looking at the same shelf of books. I quickly turned the conversation to something light as my sister came over when we were walking to the counter and kept it that way for the rest of our outing. But what made me feel worse was the fact that the man, not even five minutes later as we were checking out, had moved from the spot and was looking at us. Not only that, but he had moved to another location in the store, further away in the woman's section, stared at us for a bit, then started to look around. The whole ordeal was really uncomfortable and was the first I ever experienced firsthand. Even I had doubts that maybe he was browsing and wasn't being a creep, but the fact that he kept on inching closer and even watched us checked out continued to stay on my mind the whole time. It just made me feel really out of place. 
He didn't come out of the store or follow us from what I can tell. We went to three other places afterwards. But it was such an unforgettable experience. I had just felt like writing this after experiencing this earlier today. And like, this whole experience just solidified the fear I have of being alone next to a strange man. It is times like today that I pity the fact that I was born a woman. I moved into this new apartment maybe last August. Right outside is a busy side road that leads to a grocery store, and it's constant driving, unless it's late. Usually after eight, it tends to become empty and barren. The streetlights line the path on both sides. However, across the street here are large trees and a lot of trash. The trash resembles a homeless man's old home, but I've walked by it many times and never seen one person. One night I was outside on my deck smoking, and I looked to see a man under the branches of a low-hanging tree, standing in the dark, motionless, not saying a thing. I couldn't tell if he was staring at me or the trees or anywhere. It was just a figure. It freaked me out and I went inside. I turned the TV on to forget about it. An hour or so later, I turned off the TV, and as I'm closing the blinds, the man is still there, in the same spot not moving, just still. I wonder what he was doing, if he was even real or just my imagination. I spent my childhood in a village between the countryside and the city. It was a quiet place, like any small village one perceives during childhood. The case I'm going to talk about is not terrifying, but it is mysterious. There's a man who often prowls along the farm, the bookstore not far from my mother's house and the metro stations. He's not dangerous. He's even a nice person. But almost everyone makes fun of him and thinks he's crazy. I don't really know much about him other than his name is Alan and he's a man who was in the Vietnam War and I think he has PTSD. I saw him again not long ago while shopping with my mother. He greeted us and came to tell us that he had seen aliens. He always whistles friendly western film music on the way while he walks. Always seemingly cheerful but very lonely. I don't even know where he lives. He's the kind of man who tells you that one day he's a grandmaster black belt in karate, and then another day he's going to act in a cowboy movie. That he was a close friend of Bruce Lee and other things. Most disturbing is his obsession with aliens and fairies, but when you talk to him, you get used to it. I've known him for many years, and he hasn't changed. He's someone who hasn't aged physically. It's very disturbing. He says... He traveled back in time. I had a church acquaintance who we'll call Matthew for this story. He was popular, funny, charismatic, and attractive. I myself had once been interested in him but by this point I knew better. He was flirty with everyone, and I wasn't into being one of the many. We were all back in town for a break over a holiday from university. It was cold, and we ended up at a rental house near downtown in a sketchy neighborhood. The party itself wasn't terribly memorable. My best friend Faith had ended up in Matthew's lap. Some kissing, but still out in a main room, and then appeared to drink too much. So we were going home. She had already had some very bad stuff happen to her while drinking, so I was already a bit concerned about her getting too drunk. Matthew, I thought, was helping me walk her out to my car when he offered to give her a ride home because she lived closer to him. I told him no, I would take her home. He stopped in the middle of the street holding onto her arm pulling. He wanted to take her. I held her other arm, again reassured that I would be taking her. 
I made a pretty firm declaration that she came with me and she would be leaving with me. This is when things got weirder. Matthew's face changed, and he went through every human emotion trying to convince me to let him take her, from trying to peer pressure me, begging with tears to anger, pulling with each approach. If I hadn't seen it, I don't know that I would have believed a person could be so fake. But it weirded me out and reinforced that there was something very, very off about him. I think we stood in the road arguing over her for five to ten minutes. Once he'd given it all he had, he abruptly gave up, and I hustled to get her in my car and far, far away from him. I dropped her off as planned. I drove home just shook, but it brought to my mind all of the other crazy things that he did previously. Killed and tortured kittens, used to whisper extremely inappropriate things in my ear and others during church to get me to react, started fires, the list goes on. His mom escaped his bio-abusive dad and changed their last names. But the real kicker for me was when I found out he was pursuing an occupation in medicine that pretty much controls if you live or die in surgery. I was disturbed. The next day, I checked in with my friend to ask if she remembered what he did that night or how things felt to her. She vaguely remembered a struggle, but that was it. The alcohol had erased a lot. I ended up moving across the country, unrelated, and so did he, so I didn't have to be in any contact with him anymore. I warned my friends because they still ran into him from time to time during the holidays. I wish I could have warned the world. At the time, the cycling through every single emotion for minutes on a freezing night trying to get my friend in his car, already practically passed out to do whatever he wanted, it all felt cold and evil. It's definitely one creepy encounter that I won't ever forget. I'm a 22 year old female. I was 18 years old at the time. In those days, I was a party girl, going out three times a week and drinking a lot. That time was wild. I decided to host a party. It was my first party, and I rented a space in my village. It was a cabin on location for events, very cheap for locals. I organized everything with my 18-year-old female best friend. Let's call her Marie, and another friend, another 18-year-old female named Rose. We were having fun decorating and preparing the party. I was so stressed about the party potentially being lame, I decided to cope the stress with alcohol. When the party started and people arrived, I was already tipsy. I invited unrelated people I knew from middle school to high school and some friends I made at college, even though no one knew anyone. The party was great and people were meeting with each other. I had a boyfriend, 19, who was coming with his friends. We were around 30 people. It was late summer, so the weather was mild, and most people were outside talking, laughing, and dancing. I had this middle school friend, let's call her Luna, who binge drank and threw up at the entrance of the cabin. She even hurt her foot, and so she had some difficulties walking. I was, at that point, drunk, but I wanted to help my friend. I asked her if she wanted to be put to bed, and she said yes. I took her arm and guided her to my house. I live in a small village in the countryside so it takes less than five minutes to get to my house. It was super safe. I used to wander alone in the streets late at night, around 1 a.m. to 4 a.m., when I had insomnia, and nothing ever happened. It was pitch dark. We were the only ones outside. As we walked, we saw a white SUV, but didn't think much of it. I came home, gave her some water, and let her sleep in my room. I was alone with my sister that night. I warned her of the presence of my friend and headed back to the party. I was not walking straight since I was so intoxicated. I saw the white SUV parked near the farm. As I continued walking, a black car stopped next to me and opened its window. I looked at the man. I still don't know what age he was. It was so dark. He said to me, I've seen this white SUV following you for a while. It's dangerous. You should come to my car. I was drunk, but I directly felt that something was wrong. I just answered that I was okay and my friends were nearby. He insisted. He repeated to come to his car for my safety. 
My inner alarm bells went off as I was trying to walk faster and answered again that I was okay. Suddenly, I heard the car's door open. He was not alone. I didn't think twice. I just ran for my life. I arrived quickly to the cabin. My friends were all drunk. One of my drunk male friends was complimenting Rose. They saw me coming at them in a hurry. The male friend looked at me and started to compliment me. I told him, man, someone tried to abduct me. He stared at me and told me that I shouldn't have left alone, that it was not safe. The party lasted until 4 a.m. People who didn't drink took their cars and left. The few others were inside the cabin and started to talk. One of my boyfriend's friends was mad on the Snapchat group because he forgot his knife at the cabin. Why did he carry a knife with him at the party? I told them about what happened, and we were all spooked. After that event, I stopped wondering in the village late at night, but I hosted a few other parties. I have never seen this man and his black car again. Most people keep telling me how great the party was. A couple who met at the party are still together. I still wonder to this day, what would have happened to me if I didn't react that spontaneously? This happened when I was a teen, or in my 20s. I'm a female. I would regularly walk to the local lake, park, and fields alone. Mind you, this was before cell phones and internet. One afternoon, I headed through the fields and was on my way to the lake when I felt something really weird in my gut telling me not to go. I felt creeped out and decided to change paths and head to a baseball-slash-soccer field. The whole walk there, I felt kind of tense, but I just figured I was shaken up by something at the lake. I got to the shocker field and sat on a swing set. I could easily see a fair distance around me and felt pretty safe. I lost track of time, I guess, and suddenly it started to get dark. I was about 20 to 25 minutes from home and decided to head back. I got off the swing and immediately feel complete terror wash over me. I hear someone's voice, a man's voice. It said something, but I couldn't make out what it was. I freeze and listen, every hair on my body standing up. Suddenly, I hear a click and see a white flash of light. I immediately hear that disposable camera post-picture ringing sound and the loud, rapid clicking of the camera person rolling the film. I am in a full panic at this point. I have three exit points. One leads backwards and towards the lake. The second exit is where the camera person is. The only other option is the opening in a fence nearly a football field away. On the other side of the fence is a neighborhood, lights, and people. I take off in a full sprint. I hear a rustling slash thudding sound and another click, flash, ring, winding the film. Tears stream down my face and I tear through the grass. I draw my knife and fly through the gate and down another pathway behind the houses on the right. I duck in a ditch in a backyard where I am far off the path, hidden, but can see whoever comes into the cul-de-sac. I have pepper spray too and grip it in my right hand shaking. My heart is pounding as I stare at the opening and wait. I wait for what feels like an eternity, but nobody comes through. I went to a friend's house who lived nearby and stayed with her for the night. I never went to the lake, park, or fields alone again. I don't know who or what was nearby, but I felt like something's prey. This happened a handful of years ago. We had a transfer come on the team from another department within the company. He was nearly completely deaf, meaning he could hear really, really loud noises, but nothing else. He did quite well speaking out loud, and he read lips to understand what was being said to him. No big deal. It just was an easy adjustment to make sure you faced him when talking and talked one at a time. He was a decent team member in the beginning but after a while started making comments to me and the only other female on the team. Things like, why haven't you made the coffee yet? And just other stupid old school jokes that made fun of women. My role gave him instructions on customer requests and needs. 
He would often not follow the instructions, and I would get calls from customers complaining. Often I had to let him know he had to go back and fix the work so it matched the original request. Afterwards, he would storm into my office and yell at me as if his inability to read and follow simple instructions was my fault. I got tired of it and said, do your job right the first time and there wouldn't be complaints. This, of course, didn't go over well with him. His anger was very unnerving. I got the feeling it wasn't going to stop there. In the following weeks, he would intentionally block doorways I would be trying to go through. One time, I was in the other female worker's small office and he blocked the entire doorway. He stood there and smiled this super creepy smile as if he was saying, what are we going to do about it? I refused to touch him and try to push past him. The other lady kept looking at me like she was beyond uncomfortable too. It was like we read each other's mind and we kept having our own conversation about something work-related and ignoring him. After several minutes, he left. Another time, I had to go to the far back of the warehouse to organize some stuff in the room. I remember going in and thinking, okay, there are two cameras and they can see this main hallway, but not between the shelving units. I had the uneasy feeling he would come back there. Sure enough, a few minutes later, he came barging in the room and came right at me. I had already been on high alert, so I quickly exited the other door in the room and booked it back to where the rest of the team was. I pulled up the security cameras to see if he had a reason to be in there. Sure enough, he paced in the room for a few minutes after I bolted and then he left. He clearly had no reason to be in there. That exact moment that I was in there. I shared this with a male coworker friend, and he said he would go back with me to any of the spaces away from the main team areas. I had to get my work done, but I didn't trust that I could do it without this angry guy finding me. Anytime he would make comments about his anger or demeaning jokes, the managers would say, Oh, he didn't understand because you talked too fast. I bet it was just a misunderstanding. As if having a disability means you can't also be a disgusting person. Not too long after that, I heard from a teammate that this angry guy had grabbed the other female's upper thigh, literally right below her waist, squeezed and said, does this make you uncomfortable? Then laughed. A few teammates witnessed it but didn't know what to do as the other female worker froze up. I immediately went to HR and told them everything he had been doing to intimidate, belittle, trap, and of course, harass us female employees. He was fired the next day. When they escorted him out, he yelled, this is retaliation. HR asked me what I would make of that comment. And all I could think was it had to do with me standing my ground with him. I was so scared to see him show up unexpectedly. I told my family what he looked like, his tattoos, the car he drove, anything that would identify him since they never met him. I blocked him from every social media platform too. After he was let go, other females came forward and shared things that he said or did to them too. They had told managers, but they dismissed it because the guy is deaf and they didn't want to deal with any of the lawsuits. As much as I hate what he did to my coworker, I'm grateful it gave that final boost to get him fired. So this happened almost 20 years ago, when I was a young 15-year-old girl. I had an older neighbor who taught drums and was a friend of my family's, and I would take drum lessons from him once a week. He only lived like two and a half blocks away, so I would always walk and he and his family lived on the end of the cul-de-sac. Well, one summery day when I was walking home at like 4 p.m., broad daylight in a quiet neighborhood, there was a strange man standing across from the end of the cul-de-sac. He had on a big cowboy hat, odd for my area, and some facial hair. I don't know. He was maybe in his 30s, and he was just staring at me. He was watching me unbashedly as I walked down the cul-de-sac and crossed the street. And once my back was to him, I could hear that he was following me. My heart sped up. My drumsticks seemed like weak protection, and I was wearing these thin little flip-flops and I remember thinking if I had to kick him, they weren't going to help me at all. Less than half a block away from me was a more busy street, and I remember thinking if I could just get to that street where people would see, he'd be sure to back off. But his steps sounded closer, 
and I could taste my panic knowing I wasn't going to make it. I ended up running up a house where I kind of knew the family, and I knew a mom with young kids were probably there, and pounded on her door. I tried to open it myself even in the panic. She opened it, and I spilled into her house and locked the door, told her what had happened, and let my heart calm down a little. After being inside for like 15 minutes, I asked if I could just hop her back fence to go home, since it would cut out a block of travel. But when we slid back the drapes of her back door, the dude was leaning against the fence, right outside her house, where he could see both the front and back doors. She ended up loading her kids in the car and driving me home, and later had her husband ask around. Turned out the dude was living with his mother, and had just gotten out of jail. I don't know the charges. All I know was that my stomach had been twisted in knots, and it was the first time I'd ever tasted fear like that. I don't know what would have happened if he'd caught me. This happened a few years ago, and I kind of wrote it off as just some random creep at the park. But now that I think about it, it really freaks me out. So I had promised my daughter, five years old, that I would take her to the park on a Saturday. The park she wanted to go to is really big and typically crowded with lots of families. So I decided we would wake up early and try to beat the crowds. Just as I had planned, we arrived around 8 a.m. and we had the whole park to ourselves. After getting her out of the car, she sprinted into the park and headed towards her favorite slide. I followed behind her, but not too close. She made her way up the slide in the play area. It was pretty tall. As soon as she stepped onto the platform to go into the slide, she turns around and looks at me and screams. I rushed to see what she screamed about, and I was only about two seconds behind her. Once I get to the platform, I see a grown man laying in the slide, and he is on a laptop. He turns around and sees me and slams the laptop shut. He then proceeded to go down the slide, come out the other side, and jogs off onto a walking trail beside the park. I didn't really get a good look at the guy because I was trying to keep my daughter from freaking out, but it really scared her. Now that I think about this encounter, I can't help but wonder what this guy was doing at a kid's park in a slide on his laptop, and why did he run off so quickly? This happened close to 14 years ago, when I was pregnant with my first child. My husband and I had gone to a friend's house one night for a bonfire and hayride party. There were a lot of people there, and we knew quite a few, but some groups brought people we didn't know. This was during a time when goth was big in some social circles. It was mostly people obsessed with bands like Insane Clown Posse and heavy metal slash screamo music. But there was another segment of this culture that was pretty heavily involved with the occult, slash Satan, etc. That night, there was a group of these types, and the majority gave off good vibes. Except for one. When I walked into the house, he immediately focused on me. It was very unsettling. He would stare, but in a very, very intense way. I don't know if I could explain it. It was unnerving. The hayride was taking off soon. So I told my husband that we should go on it. He had slipped out of the house and I knew this guy was still in the house. I just wanted to get away from him. We loaded up on the wagon and got situated. Seconds before we took off, the guy suddenly jumps up in the wagon and squeezes in a spot directly across from me. The entire ride he stared, eyes boring into my soul. And honestly, this might sound super odd, but I had this overwhelming sense that he wanted to kill my baby. I can't explain it. I just felt the overpowering sense of evil. And how can you share this with someone else without sounding like you've lost your mind? So I didn't say anything to anyone. When we got back, I told my husband I didn't feel well and we should head out. With my large belly and all, he didn't question it and we left. Fast forward to a few years later, we visited a church of that same friend that held the party. 
and who should be there but that guy? Except this time, he had toned down his looks quite a bit, and his body language was more relaxed. I immediately sensed that he was a different person than I encountered years ago. My husband struck up a conversation with the guy for a while, but I decided to keep my distance. Afterwards, my husband told me how this guy had completely changed his life, how he had once been deep into satanic stuff and see evil spirits. And then he shared the one thing that made the hair on the back of my neck stand straight up. Do you remember seeing him at that bonfire years ago? You won't believe it. He said he was at his lowest point at that time. He said he constantly heard voices telling him to kill people, and it was all he could do to not listen to them. Lurking on this sub has helped some memories resurface. This is the first experience that I feel like sharing. At the age of 20, I, who am now a 29-year-old female, was working to get my cosmetology license at a small-town beauty school. It was a modest school in a slightly run-down, dated building. The owner was a woman in her mid to late 60s, whose husband of similar age and son performed the property maintenance for the school. I didn't like being around the husband. I found him off-putting. I sensed an unpredictable vibe. He was quiet, but I always felt like he was leering at us girls. Rumors abound that he was always drunk, and that would have lined up with his demeanor and general appearance. One day, he really gave me a reason to not like him. This happened during our end-of-day cleanup where students had to complete a list of chores. Right of the hallway with our lockers was a tiny break room that housed a creepy old closet that was used for storing cleaning supplies. The dimensions of the closet are important, roughly 15 feet deep, but only as wide as its door, so around three feet. Someone coming to stand in the closet doorway while you were inside would stop you from exiting. A single crappy light hung near the door, so the farther you went into the closet, the darker it got, approaching blackness. A vending machine in front of that closet obstructed its view, meaning that someone walking down the hallway cannot see the closet unless they actually come into the break room. I'm also 99% sure the closet door couldn't even be seen by the one camera in the break room. One day, I'm in the closet alone, looking for Swiffer pads or something. No one in the break room. Suddenly, someone appears in the closet doorway. It's the owner's husband. He steps into the closet and I just stare. Now, I have little to no rapport with this man. It's doubtful he even knows my name. I was also 5'5 five five and about 100 pounds. Dude was old, but he was able-bodied and bigger than I was. Without any kind of greeting that I can remember, he says in his low rumble, I'll get you back there, pinned so tight. And he finishes his sentence with either, you won't know what to do, or you wouldn't believe it. I can't remember verbatim. I'm trying to process his words while alarm bells are going off in my head. What did he just say? There's no one here but us. We weren't even having a conversation, let alone a conversation that would match those words. I'm so confused and nervous that I don't say anything in response. I just pretend everything is fine and that I'm so absorbed in finding Swiffer pads that I didn't hear him. After a few moments, he steps back out of the doorway and leaves the break room. Relieved, I got the hell out of the closet. I couldn't believe he said that. There was no context that would have made his words make sense. Also, I don't think he got anything out of the closet. So why would he even go in there? The cleaning tasks were assigned to students. The whole thing was only a minute, but it was unsettling. I'm glad he didn't do anything worse. I quietly told a few girls, but I was scared to complain formally. I was timid, broke, with limited prospects in a town that I had just moved to, and I didn't want trouble. I just wanted to graduate. Upon hearing my experience, another girl told me that she'd also had an unsettling encounter with him, where he'd stated that it had been a while since he had a little girl in the closet. I've survived worse situations, and I have since learned how to stand up for myself, but I regret letting him get away with intimidation. I should have just told him to F off.
Thank you so much for listening to all of the stories in this video. I do appreciate it. I hope you get an excellent night's sleep, and I hope you enjoy the rain at the end of this video. Good night, everybody.